The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I forget who, but someone once said that fate is like a madman with an axe waiting for us around the next corner. Which is to say, of course, that however serene our lives, we never know whether the madman is lurking around the next corner we turn, ready to take a vicious swipe at us with that axe. In point of which, consider the case of Lucas Lauder, warden of a certain state prison in a certain western state. Our mystery drama, The Strange Case of Lucas Lauder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Robert Lansing. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As we know, the death penalty is outlawed in many states. But in some, it is still enforced. In such special cases as the murder of a policeman, death through kidnapping, and or particularly vicious crimes. Our story begins in just such a state, in the condemned cell of that state's prison. You sent a message you wanted to see me, Richards? And, uh, thank you, Warden. Thanks very much for answering it this quickly. Why don't you sit down? What is it, Richards? I want to discuss my case with you. There's nothing to discuss. You were legally tried, legally convicted. If you think there's something I can do to save oh, you... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's nothing like that. A warden and I was guilty. I freely admitted murdering those women, all four of them, and mutilating them with a butcher knife. No, no, no. The name the newspapers gave me was well-deserved. Guy the Ripper. All right, then what is it you want to see me about? Warden, hasn't it ever struck you as odd, curious, that someone of my breeding and background could be guilty of four such horrible murders, murders and mutilations identical with those done by Jack the Ripper nearly a century ago? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it has. Me and quite a few others. If you'd been judged insane... But I wasn't un- so judged. Nor was I insane. No, I am as sane as the next one. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. Richards, I'm a very busy man. I and guess. prefer to spend as little time as possible in the company of anyone as vicious and depraved as Guy Richards. Yes, I know. But that's exactly why I asked you to come and see me. Warden, before very long, you're going to be spending all your time in my company. <laughs> I don't blame you for looking puzzled. Let me explain. Yes, do explain. A little more than a year ago, Warden, I was a professor of parapsychology at the university. I was happily married, successful, and deeply involved in my work. And then suddenly, shockingly, for no apparent reason, I became... Well, the embodiment, you might say, of a man who has been dead for many, many years. Jack the Ripper. It began, Warden. It all began one morning in my office at State University. Come in. Well, Eric. Eric Nordling. It's good to see you. Good to be back, Guy. Good to have you back. I can't tell you how much I've missed you this past month. It's like missing my right arm. Oh, nonsense. I'll be frank with you. When you went into the hospital for those tests a month ago, I didn't expect I'd miss you as much at all. Why should you? I'm just an assistant professor. Ah, but what an assistant. You remember when you left, you and the class were analyzing those strange, gruesome murders that had taken place? The three women? You remember? I remember. Well, I took over for you, and believe me, the class soon let me know that I just wasn't in it with you. They said no one. Not even me could touch you when it came to explaining the murderer's drives and motivations. <laughs> In fact, they said you understood and explained them so well 
They wouldn't be surprised if you were the murderer. <laughs> well, what is it, Eric? Eric? Guy, I was... Uh, I am the murderer. Uh, well, I can see you're not joking, Eric. I'm not. Well, I also know that you haven't been well. In fact, I'm very sick. Guy, I'm dying. But none of that changes the simple truth that I murdered those women and mutilated them. Guy, I'm Jack the Ripper. No, I'm, I'm not crazy. As a professor of parapsychology, you do believe that people can be possessed by the spirits of the dead. Uh, I keep an open mind, or try to. Well, I can tell you that possession is a fact. For some time now, I have been possessed by the spirit of Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Eric, if I didn't know you better, I'd say that you're really possessed of a dose of LSD. But since I... Guy, do... believe me. What I'm telling you is the truth. Believe me, because... you're about to become Jack the Ripper. Eric, you're ill. I can tell from looking at you, you're serious. I you? am. I'm dying. I told you that. They've given me less than two months to live. Oh, Eric. It's terminal. In less than two months, I'll be dead. And the day I die, the instant I die, the Ripper's spirit will leave my body and enter yours. You don't believe me, do you? Of course not. Well, then I'll have to prove it. You've taken your penknife out of your pocket and you're opening the blade. Well, yes, to clean out my pipe. What's so unusual about that? Does your pipe need cleaning? Well, no, but... Uh... You acted on impulse. Sudden, inexplicable desire. Desire to hold a knife in your hand. Oh, now, of all the senseless... It isn't senseless. And if you think so, try to put the knife back in your pocket. Well, go ahead. Close the blade. Put the knife back in your pocket. Ah. Uh, why, I, I haven't done what I intended to do, clean out my pipe. Is that what you intended to do? Oh, in heaven's name, Guy, be honest with yourself, is it? Mm, no. Now, what... What do you intend to do with that knife? What do you want to do with it? I... I want... I want to kill with it. To strike and slash. Ah! What is this? What? what? It's Jack the Ripper. Using your body. You needed proof, and he... I just gave it to you. I took possession of you for a few moments. But when Eric Nordling dies, I'll become Guy Richards... Till he dies. And after that... Oh, no, this, uh, it's madness. You deny you felt an overwhelming urge to strike and slash? No, but there's got to be some explanation. There is. You can pick up your knife and put it away. Or clean your pipe. If you really want to. Well, Warden, those were Eric Nordling's words. Almost his identical words. Just before he told me what I'm about to tell you. Mm -hmm. That I'm about to become Jack the Ripper. The day, the instant, I die. Yes. If there's anything further you want... Now, wait, wait, don't go. I, I... Now, look, Richards, your time is short and I... Yours do... is. And I want to do everything I can to make the next few days easy for you. But when it comes to listening to the kind of... The kind of story you just told me, I haven't the time. You don't believe it either, hmm? Even I didn't. With all my knowledge of the occult, the psychic, I couldn't bring myself to believe in anything so impossible. Seemingly impossible. I'm not as the word. You think I've gone a little, uh, what do they call it here, stir-crazy? No, you haven't been in long enough for that. 
I'm not calling it anything. I'm not thinking anything. Look, you want to get something off your chest, you get it off. I'll be going. No, no, please. Richards, I don't Listen have time. Listen for just one minute more. At six in the morning, two days from now, I'll be hanged for murders every bit as revolting as those of Jack the Ripper. Because I am Jack the Ripper. This body, you see, is the body of Guy Richards, once respected university professor. But I... The spirit that inhabits this body... Well, I am, I assure you, Jack the Ripper. Now, let me assure you, as Eric Nordling assured Guy Richards... At the very instant the rope snaps my neck, on that instant, Warden, you will become Jack the Ripper. Now, if there's anything further I can do... And I'll prove it to you as I made Nordling prove it to Richards. Now, before you go to bed tonight, you will feel that same strong, overpowering urge, need to strike and slash with a knife. Before you go to bed tonight... really one of the strangest stories you've ever brought home with you. Mm. More potatoes? Mm, thanks. <laughs> it's funny, though. What? Well, I... And don't ask me why I did this. I certainly didn't believe a word of Richard's story. Not a word, but... I guess curiosity got the better of me. What? Well, I checked at the university. Richard's did have an assistant named Eric Nordling, and he did die when Richard said he did. Doesn't mean anything. And still, that part of Richard's story was true. <laughs> Johnny, what do you think? What do I think? Well, he was kind of interested in that stuff. Yoga and astrology and the psychic and all oh, that. Oh, not really. Yeah, but you do have an interest. And not a serious interest. Still, what do you think? <laughs> I think I'd like another piece of roast beef. That's what I think. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll try not to be so heavy-handed this time. Oh, you weren't heavy-handed. Just slice it a smidgen thinner, that's all. Just a smidgen. Smidgen it is, and easily done with a knife as razor sharp as this. Won't be done at all if you don't stop staring at that knife and cut me a slice. Luke? What? It's nothing. I was just, I was just thinking. Thinking what? The way Richards talked this afternoon, you'd, you'd, you'd have thought I was going to grab, grab it the first chance I got to carve up some likely female. <laughs> you, for instance. Don't say things like that, Luke, not even jokingly. I'm never sorry. But can, can you imagine anyone like me, for instance, starting to cut a slice of roast beef and then changing my mind and deciding to carve a few slices out of you. No, I can't, and I'd just as soon not. The table, like this. Holding the carving knife in my hand. This razor-sharp carving knife. I'd come around the table toward you. Luke, please. And when I got to you, I'd stand over you. I'd look, look deep Look deep into your eyes, and then and raise the knife high over my head and plunge it. Luke! Luke, what's come over you? If this is a joke, it isn't your kind of joke. It was a joke, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Sure. Sure. It was a joke. What else? What else indeed? What else could it be? It could be what Warden Lucas Lauder knows it was. No joke at all. That for a few moments in time... He was gripped by, driven by an all but overwhelming urge to strike with that knife, slash with that knife, kill with that knife. I'll return in a moment for Act Two.
as I said earlier, fate is sometimes likened to a madman with an axe. And it would surely seem that Lucas Lauder, warden of state's prison, has run head on into him. When Guy Richards told Lucas that he was really Jack the Ripper, that his body was possessed by the spirit of the Ripper, Lucas laughed. But his laugh turned to a worried frown when he came dangerously close to stabbing the wife he loves. Now in Lucas' office at State's Prison the following afternoon. No, Jerry. No, look, I don't mean to be harsh, but I think Maxwell's privileges should be taken away for a while. Yes, a week at least. All right, goodbye. Yes, Miss Conway? They brought Guy Richards over, Warden. Uh, all right, tell them to bring him in. Yes, sir. Bring him in. All right, boys, you wait outside. Sit down, Richards. Thank you. Richards, I want to talk to you about... <clears throat> among other things, I want to talk about your personal effects. Well, we've talked about that. I told you, I don't give a damn what you do with them. Warden, you didn't have me brought here to talk about my property. You brought me here to talk about what happened to you last night. Look, if you're going to start again on that nonsense about being Jack the Ripper... It isn't I'm nonsense, not... and you know it. Now, you also know that when I go through the trap less than 48 hours from now, you'll become Jack the Ripper. You know it because I put you through a sort of trial run, you might say, last night. What did happen last night, Wharton? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about what your wife, Joan, thought was a sick joke. But it was no joke at all. I'm talking about how you stood over her with a carving knife. The knife you'd been using for the roast beef. Right? Oh, look, you're not going to be sick, are you? How do you know that's what happened? I was there. How else? No. Now, that's impossible. What you're saying is impossible. Incredible, yes, but not impossible. I explained to you yesterday, or tried to explain, that I took this body when Eric Nordling died, just as I occupied his body when... Oh, well, it doesn't matter who died before him or before him. All that matters to you, or should matter to you, is that you're next on that list to, shall we say, play host to Jack the Ripper. But why? Why? Yes. Look, you must have died... <laughs> what am I saying? Jack the Ripper must have died many, many years ago. In 1907, to be exact. All right, then you've been dead. I mean, damn it, the Ripper has been dead nearly 70 years. But his spirit, my spirit, has lived on in others. All right, that's what I'm getting at. Why? Because I cannot rest. Why, because of the awful crimes you committed? No, not because of the crimes. But the reason behind them. The evil in me that drove me to... to what I did. The hate. No, I don't understand. There is nothing to understand. It's quite simple. A spirit, a soul, is given an earthly body and forced to suffer through what you call life. Forced to go through this agony again and again and again until it is cleansed completely of evil, of hate. The evil in me was so great it will take, well, only the Lord knows how many lifetimes to wipe it away. Unless. Unless? Unless it meets a love as pure as the hate is evil. A soul as tender as the hate is brutal. A spirit as compassionate as the hate is ruthless. And that... That will never be. Never? No such love exists. No such soul, no such spirit. Not on this earth, that's for sure. You really believe what you're saying, don't you? You really believe that you are actually Jack the Ripper. Oh, and for the you... love... I'm going to give you another taste of what it's going to be like to be Jack the Ripper. If you think for one minute that I don't I don't care believe... what you believe. Just do me a favor and send me back to my cell. 
Yes, Warden. Richards will go back to his cell now. Yes, sir. Richards is going back now. Remember what I said, Warden. I'm going to give you another taste. Soon. All right, let's go. Uh, Warden. Yes, Miss Conway. It's near time for me to go home, and the buses get awful crowded in weather like this, so I was wondering, could I leave now? Oh, sure he is, of course. Go ahead. Uh, wait a minute. Yes, sir? I was about to leave myself. I'll drive you home. Oh, no, sir. I I couldn't take you out of your way. No, it's not out of my way. But not much, anyhow. Well, if, if you're sure, it's no trouble. No trouble at all. It'll be... It'll be a pleasure. Nice of you. I'll see to your door. Oh, no need for that. No, I insist. There have been a lot of mugging in this neighborhood. Mm, some. So I want to be sure that you get to your apartment safe and sound. Well, thanks again. You're awfully kind. That's no, not at all, Miss Coleman. Uh, I wonder if I could... I wonder if I might use your phone. Oh, sure. Just call home. Let my wife know I'll be a little late. Second thought, there's no sense in calling. I won't be that late. Oh, only five or ten minutes. Hey, boy. Look at the rain and the wind against the window. It chills me to the bone just looking at it. Well, I couldn't give you a drink, could I, sir? <laughs> no, Miss Comley, I wasn't hinting, you know. Oh, I didn't think you were, but, well, if you would like a drink. Oh, why not? I'd love one. I keep the liquor in the kitchen. It's scotch, isn't it? Uh, just a short one. I won't be a minute. No, I'll come with you, if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Never been in your apartment before. I'd like to see how my secretary lives. Oh, not very fancy, I'm afraid. It looks nice. It's comfortable. You live alone? Yes, I tried living with someone else, but it oh, it just didn't work out. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. That's good scotch. Glad you like it. Where'd you get those knives? Knives? Uh, yeah, the, the knife set on the wall. Oh, oh, that was a. Uh... I don't know. I've had them so long. Why? Oh, I like knives. Good ones, that is. Those look good. Do you mind if I... Well, no. Be my guest. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Feel that edge. You don't often see knives kept in this good condition. This... This sharp. It's no thanks to me. I just use them, never sharpen them. Razor. Sharp. Fit in the hand perfectly. Those are the most beautiful knives I've seen in over 70 years. Jane. Get out of my cell, Warden. I don't have to put up what with this. What are you doing to me? You answer me, Richards. What are you doing? I've told no, you. You told me a lot of nonsense about you being Jack the R taking possession of me, my my body when you die. I don't buy that. You're up to something. You've done something to me. And I'm not leaving this cell till you tell me what it is. You're scared, Warden? Of what you came dangerously close to doing to your secretary yesterday? And will do not long after you hang me? <laughs> the urge, the nearly overpowering urge. I stayed your head, not you. To plunge the knife into her? To slash up and see... Stop it! Listen to me. I'm no fool. Yesterday I nearly murdered that girl. And somehow you know all about it. But I stayed my hand, not you, because I'm not a killer. And how do I know what went on in that kitchen? I don't know how you... You've devoted your life to parapsychology, and you know all there is to know about things like ESP, thought transference, hypnotism. Hypnotism. That's it. Hypnotism. Like Nordling, you're a, you're a hypnotist. Somehow or other, I don't know how, you managed to hypnotize me when I was talking to you. You put ideas in my head. Post-hypnotic post suggestion, I think it's called. You cannot give a post-hypnotic command that's contrary to the subject's normal fiber. Warden, it would be impossible for me or anyone to command you to kill. It isn't in you to kill. But that will all change. 
when I am in you. At approximately a second or two after six o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, which reminds me, I have a gift for you. Here. A knife? A knife. Where did you get this? It was made for me in the prison machine shop from a soup ladle. A soup ladle carefully ground down at the edges, skillfully shaped into a knife. Expertly sharpened. How did you manage to have this made? How did you manage oh, to have calm, this made? Calm, Warden, you know your prison as well as I, or you should, and obviously don't. Anything can be done in a prison if you know the ropes. Here, the knife. Take it. Ed. Ed? You take that knife from Richards and get rid of it. See me in my office later and you explain how he got it. Now, wait, wait a minute. Here, give it to me. I'll, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> Not until you've used it. Not until I, the Ripper, have used it. Again. And again. And again. Ed, I don't want to see this man again until his execution tomorrow morning at 6. If he has any last-minute requests, you handle them. If he has any questions, you answer them. If he wants to see me for any reasons, no. Tomorrow morning, Richards, I'll see you then, and not until then. Six o'clock. On the scaffold, Richards. On the scaffold, when the noose will be tightened round the neck of Guy Richards... The trap will be sprung, and he'll plummet to death. Or will it be life? Another life to be lived out in the body of Warden Lucas Lauder. I'll return shortly for Act Three. much talk these days about possession, the control of a human being by an evil spirit. Probably such talk has gone on since man can remember. Intense discussion, even violent debate as to whether possession is a form of schizophrenia or a malignant spirit which has invaded an earthly body. For Lucas Lauder, warden of state's prison, it isn't a subject for idle debate but a frightening reality in the bedroom of his home a short distance from the prison itself. Luke? Go to sleep, John. Oh, I know it's impossible for you to sleep the night before an execution, but this time there's something else. Yeah. John, I'm scared. Of what, dear? I haven't just been sitting here in this chair watching you while you slept. I... Yes? I've been fighting an urge. A powerful urge to kill you. Kill me? Yeah, with this. Where did you get that? Richards gave it to me. Ugly looking knife, isn't it? Somehow he managed to get it made in the machine shop and have it smuggled to him. He he gave it to me as a present. It's a strange kind of present. No, it's, it's not a present to me, Joan. It's to himself. To, oh, oh, that nonsense. Nonsense? What about him being the reincarnation of Jack the Ripper? Oh, he is. He is. I, I laughed too at first, but he is the Ripper. In possession of Guy Richard's body. And at six this morning, less than three hours from now, he'll be in possession of mine. Luke. Luke, darling, you, you can't be serious. You don't really believe that. Uh, after what's happened, I'd be a fool if I didn't. What has happened? He... I had to bring myself to talk about it. He, he told me he was going to take possession of me temporarily for a short time to prepare me for what's 
to come after he hangs. Well, you didn't take that seriously. No, 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 not then, but within an hour, I... I nearly stabbed Miss Conley to death. Your secretary? I drove her home in that storm day before yesterday. I invited myself in. You? Pretended I wanted to use the phone to call you, but I had no intention of using that phone. I just wanted to get into her apartment to... To kill her? I didn't know it then. I... I didn't know why I tricked my way in, but... Well, then I, I sort of led her into offering me a drink, and I went with her into the kitchen where she keeps the liquor. While she was making the drink, I noticed a set of knives, kitchen knives, you know, on, on the wall. I pretended to admire them, and I, I took one to examine it only. I, only I wasn't examining it. I was thinking... I was thinking, Luke, my darling. Now don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Don't even come near me. It's, it's dangerous. Dangerous, Luke. What are you saying? I can do to you right now, right now. What I came close to doing to her. The urge was powerful then, but it, it's even more powerful now. It's almost as if, as if the closer I get to Richard's hanging, the more the urge grows inside me. Luke, I don't have any control. John, no control anymore. This knife, I gave, I gave it to the guard to get rid of. No, 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 I, I started to give it to him, and then I changed my mind. I mean, I was forced to change it by a power stronger than me, and so I kept it and brought it home. And I've been sitting here for hours holding it in my hand, fighting off a terrible obsession to kill you with it. Oh, my poor darling, to think what you've been going through, and I never knew... How can you think of me when you're the one who's in danger? Well, because I don't believe I am in danger, not from you. John, I just told you. I, I don't care what you told me. I care about what I know, and I know you love me. Oh, yes, I love you, but he... He'll be dead in a few hours, dead. And all this business about his spirit possessing you, I don't believe it. I, you, I came close, that close, to killing Miss Coleman. And killing me, you say. But you didn't. Yeah, but next time. There won't be a next time, because once Guy Richard dies, his power over you will be ended. Oh, Luke. Luke, don't you see what's happened to you? Yes, I see. He's possessed me. Nonsense. I can give you, I don't know how many reasons why it is just plain nonsense. All right, give me just one. Well, I've read a lot about Richards in the papers, and you've told me a lot about him. He's a skilled hypnotist. Uh, I don't know much, if anything, about hypnotism, but it seems to me that he could have brought you under some kind of hypnotic oh, influence. Oh, no, 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 I can't believe it. Another that. thing I know about him, his personality is strong, overpowering, viciously overpowering. Just talking to someone like that, being near him, could do strange things to a person. No, 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 I don't care how many reasons you can dress up. I know what I know. I know what I've got to do. What? I've got to stop the execution. Luke, you can't do that. Well, I can try. It's my only hope. I've got to... I've got to stop that execution. I've got to save him to save myself. I know it's only four in the morning, but this is a matter of life or death. You get the district attorney out of bed. I'll wait. Luke, try to pull yourself together. Telephoning the district attorney at this hour? What are you going to say to Hello, him? Hello, uh, Mr. McGowan? I'm sorry to wake you at this hour, sir. Uh, thank you, yes. It is, it, it is urgent. I want to stop the execution of Guy Richards at six this morning. On what grounds? I have reason to think he's innocent. Uh, no, sir, there's no proof. No, no, no real proof, but... Look, McGowan, I want you to call the governor if necessary. McGowan, I beg you, right? Yes, I see. I see. In that case, I'll, I'll phone the governor myself. Luke, darling, you can't phone the governor. Operator, this is Warden Lucas Lauder of State's Prison. I want to put through a call, an urgent call to Governor Morris at the state capitol. And hurry, please hurry. Well? He refused. Well, you couldn't expect. No, I didn't. I hoped against hope. I 
I better get ready. Richards has less than an hour to go. And so have I. It's time, Richards. <laughs> You're telling me. If you're ready. Question is, are you? Come on, let's go. You look tired, Warden. No sleep, eh? Well, don't worry about it. You'll sleep just fine tonight. The Ripper always sleeps well. Afterward. After what? Having killed. Well, I didn't know there'd be an audience to see the end of Guy Richards. The press. Straight ahead to the scaffold, Richards. You're sweating, Warden. Calm down. Make you feel any better, there's no pain to this. Over in an instant, you know. I've been through it once before. The man whose body I took before, Eric Nortlings. Well, huh. here we are. A moment in destiny. For us both. All right, Ed. Oh... Do we really need the hood? Well, yes, I guess we do. Spare the feelings of our audience. Go ahead. Just uh, one thing to say, Warden, before you pull the trap. Yes? This isn't goodbye. I'll be with you again soon. news for one day. I'm for bed. You, Luke? Luke? What? It's after 11. Time for bed. Oh. Uh, yeah, Joan. Yes, dear? Where did you put it? Put what? The knife. I mean, don't look at me as though you didn't know what I was talking about. The knife Richards gave me. I know what knife you're talking about, but I don't know why you're asking me where I put it. You didn't take it? I put it in the top drawer of this table. You saw me put it there. I put it there so you could get rid of it. You didn't? No. I can't believe you'd take the chance to... You didn't. The knife is here. Yes, it is. Look, I gave you a chance to get rid of it. Why didn't you? Why didn't you? If you wanted to be rid of it, why didn't you simply throw it away? I, I don't know. I think I do. You were testing me, testing my love for you. Testing your love? If I had done what you thought I'd do, it would have shown that my love for you isn't as strong as I said it was. And it's quite possible you really might have tried to kill me. You could always get another knife. Yeah, but thanks to you, I have this one. Then use it, if you can. What? Luke, we're going to come to this sooner or later. I don't, I don't know how Guy Richards persuaded you he was Jack the Ripper and that he would possess you once he died, but he did. You said last night that the urge to kill was growing stronger in you, and you were convinced once Richard was hanged, it would become so strong you'd never be able to control it. I've been doing that all day. It's growing in me. Filling me with a need, a lust to take this... this knife. I know. And unless this obsession of yours is smashed now, right now, you'll kill. Sooner or later, you will kill. If you're going to do it, do it. Do it. And get it over with. You're taunting me. You're taunting me because, like all women, you have contempt for me. I love oh, you're you. You're lying. You don't love. You don't know the meaning of love. Hate? Oh, that's something else again. That's something you know all about. I think I'm not on to you, all of you. Well, let me tell you something. I've spent months, years watching you and the likes of you. Luke. 
for Playing it. your little tricks, luring men, and... Oh, don't think I didn't see you today, this very day in Leicester Square, flaunting your charm. Leicester Square? Leicester Square, Piccadilly, Fleet Street, wherever you could sell to yourself. Luke, Nest and have out of it. Pull, pull yourself together. Look about you. Take your last long look before you die. You see that gaslight yes. at the end of the alley? Oh, you see it for the last time. Gaslight? Listen. You hear the carriages and the coaches, the horses, for the last time. And then feel, you feel the point of this knife against your throat. Feel the cold steel against your skin before the ripper plunges it deep into your dirty little neck. Plunges it now. I can't. I want to. I, I, I can't. Why? Why can't I? Because you're not Jack the Ripper. You're Lucas Lauder, my husband. The Ripper hated you, love. You love me every bit as much as I love you. Oh God, I do, I do, I do, my I do, I do. Dearest. He said, Richard said, the spirit of the Ripper would never be free, never find rest until it met a love as strong as his hate. Heaven knows, Joan, there can't be, there never has been a love as strong as yours. <laughs> Maybe it's crazy, but I feel... I feel he has found that rest at last. Thanks to you. <laughs> If you're puzzled by this strange happening to Lucas Laurie, you've got nothing on me. Did Guy Richards in some way place Warden Lauder under an hypnotic influence? Did Richards believe he was truly Jack the Ripper? Was he? What do you think? I'll be back shortly. I told this story to a friend of mine who is a psychic, a sensitive. She said that, of course, Guy Richards was the reincarnate Jack the Ripper. Another friend, a psychiatrist, said, nonsense, a clear case of a split personality. Which is right, I don't know. Maybe the truth lies somewhere in between. Wherever it lies, it makes a good story. I hope you enjoyed it. Our cast included Robert Lansing, Linka Peterson, Ralph Bell, Ira Lewis, and Patricia Pearden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>